everything comes together. You talk about the uh, go and the green light, and my story is about when you ignore that green light and you ignore that go, and God removes the obstacles in your life that you keep putting in there, and he keeps taking them out so that you can go. It was on Friday in October 2012, I was finishing an appointment at a salon with my hairdresser, May Lynn. She had been my hairdresser for 11 years, working out of a one-room shop in her dad's business facility in a small town. She was also a good friend just as long. My cut and updated hair color was beautiful after my visit with her, but I needed to purchase some hair care products to keep that look. She was out of supplies and specific, that I specifically needed, and she said she'd pick up some that weekend. We agreed to meet on Sunday afternoon following church so I could purchase them from her. Sunday morning, I went to church as usual, taking my position as a lead singer in the praise band for a 1030 service. It was mid-October. The weather was still beautifully warm for a Wisconsin fall. The windows of the church were open. A gentle breeze blew through the sanctuary. The light shone brilliantly through the stained glass windows, illuminating everything. I remember singing several songs that day about angels among us and feeling like they were truly in the church. Following the service, I texted May Lynn to arrange a time for our meeting. I knew she was working at this, another salon 30 miles away from our little small town. She planned to pick up my product from the wholesaler on the way home from the other salon, but there was no response to my text. I texted again and still no response. At this point, I assumed her Sunday must have been busier with clients than she had expected, so I gave her some time before I attempted to connect again. Several hours had passed. I decided to call instead of texting. No response. This was so unlike her because her phone was connected to her at all times, even when she was cutting me my hair. As she always said, I have four kids and this is how I stay on top of them. Shortly after leaving a voicemail, I began pre preparing dinner, and I turned on the TV for the local news and saw the featured story, shooting at the salon. My heart sank, and I was paralyzed with fear. The reporter didn't have to mention any names. I knew May Lynn was involved. May Lynn was working on the main floor that day, focusing on, it was a two-story salon, focusing on the hair services for the clients. Her longtime colleague, to protect her identity, I'll call her as Sue, was working with May Lynn that day. Sue's daughters were also in the salon for whatever reason. As the afternoon progressed, the beauticians didn't realize Sue's estranged husband was on his way to pay a visit. May Lynn was working on the, I'm sorry, it was believed that uh, John came to the salon for retaliation after Sue filed a restraining order against him when he slashed her tires on her car just a few weeks earlier. John came into the salon with his illegally purchased gun, intending to kill Sue and anyone who stood in his way of ending her life. And he did just that. It was reported that May Lynn, whose stylist chair was adjacent to Sue's chair, stepped in front of the two young daughters to protect them from her father, and that sealed her fate. Within a short period, May, was, May Lynn was shot twice in the face and in the chest, from what I'm told, and did not survive. This is my friend. Sue and another hairdresser did not survive either. Four others were shot, but John miraculously lived, or excuse me, by John, and miraculously lived. His daughters survived too, but John ended his life in the salon after the chaos. I could no longer focus on dinner, as you can imagine. The news reporter was talking about the shooting, but it was too premature to report just how many people were totally uh, or f fatally shot. It didn't matter. I knew my friend of 11 years was gone at the age of 38, leaving behind her husband, four children, and a new grandbaby. Women love their hairdressers, and they stay with them for years, decades even. A hairdresser is someone you visit every six weeks for a haircut or a color, and you can spend an hour or two with them at each visit, and it turns into a counseling session. You walk into their salon looking terrible with lifeless, colorless hair, and then when they are done, you leave feeling fabulous on the outside. You walk in feeling emotionally drained, and because you just unloaded your issues and everything off your chest, so to speak, you now feel beautiful on the inside, too. 
They know everything about you, perhaps even more than your spouse. They know about your children, your husband, your relationships, your parents, everything, and I was no different. She was my therapist. My friend and counselor, my idol, I, who I confronted in for 11 years, had just been murdered. The person I depended on for making me beautiful inside and out was gone. I couldn't do anything about bringing her back, and I wasn't sure how to move forward. I was powerless. We believe our lives are shaped by a series of events in culmination of people that pass through our lives. I know God has brought people into my life and removed them for specific purposes. The summer following that murder of my beloved friend, I ignored, excuse me, I joined a group of worship leaders from my church and attended a worship conference with several churches in the area. The conference leader was able to bring some well-known specialists to teach the teams about a variety of topics from technology to instrument techniques and even vocal coaching. And that day was a full day conference with breakout sessions and plenary sessions. And in between each session, we were given breaks to network with other band members, instructors, and so forth. The vocal coach was a phenomenal singer from California who happened to be married to a well-known Christian drummer who also happened to play with Ringo Starr and several other celebrities. She, too, was well-known in the music industry, performing as a backup singer for several celebrities. This vocal coach, before I had my session with her, would always walk past me during the conference and glance at me with a tilted head and smile. At one point in the day, she quickly asked, are, how are you? Is everything OK? Mind you, we never met, and the tone of her question was not the simple Wisconsin version of saying hello. I sensed she was legitimately concerned. After my coaching session, we met again during another break. This time, she pulled me aside and said, God has placed something on my heart to tell you. He wants me to tell you, you have to stop fighting. Don't be afraid. You have too many gifts, and he wants you to use them for a bigger purpose. Wow. Over the course of the next three years, my story is where I felt God changing the entire journey, answering my prayer when I cried out, Lord, change me or change my environment. In my hindsight, I see now where distractions were stripped away, the distractions that I had placed ahead of him, the idols in my life. My friends at church, friends in the community, even my family slowly started leaving my life for a variety of different reasons. My small, close circle of influence became distant emotionally and physically in the most bizarre turn of events. The death of my hairdresser several years earlier was just the beginning. My cycle of influence was no longer, my circle of influence was no longer available. My parents, who had managed a successful small business <clears throat> close to me, a floral shop for 20 years after living on a farm, had miraculously received a generous offer to purchase their store building, and out of nowhere, they closed the shops consolidated their house and moved two hours away. In five months, their lives had changed and they were no longer available in the capacity they once were for me. I was working as a manager for a manager in New York who determined my career was in dire need of a change. My job was suddenly over and I left the financial institution with all the lucrative benefits behind. My identity and everything I worked for was gone. When your job is gone, the income is gone as well. These losses occurred within a three-year period just after I met that angel on earth at the music conference. I truly believe God was stripping away in the form of protecting me anything I had left lifted on a pedestal, anything I had grown myself and was full of pride through that accomplishment. He was answering my prayer of changing me and changing my environment, and I firmly believe God removed these in order to move me into a place where I could find him in the wilderness. And so the true transformation began unbeknownst to me. God was about to unravel me, and I can just envision him smiling so fervently because I gave him permission to change me. As Psalm 147, verse 11 states, the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear and are obedient to him and those who hope in his steadfast love. But it's also a promise in Psalm 1819 that I held in order to understand what was happening because he brought me out of the broad place, as it says. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Yes, he delights in me. In order to rescue me, he needed to pull me out of everything I had placed in that journey, in that pathway, and put me into the wilderness, his broad place, to remove everything that was in that way of my relationship with him. A distant relative of mine, a pastor in Florida, once said, if you aren't continuously amazed by God every day, you aren't trusting him enough. 
This journey with God in the wilderness was enlightening and full of wonder, an awestruck experience, as I had started to see the movement of so many mountains in my life. It was a painful journey. I won't lie about that. However, I learned so much about how God prepares us, positions us, so that we can grab hold of the promises that reach and reach that promised land. I struggled with those major disruptions in my life, but God empowers us. Self-pity is not from God because it drains us. It doesn't empower us. When you're feeling drained emotionally, your attitude reflects that. I had to learn how to check my attitude and believe in the power of God for healing. Deuteronomy continuously, continuously speaks of God positioning his people so that they can possess the promised land. He positions us so we can possess his promises. He positioned me to meet and develop relationships with many new people, like all of you, in ways that I had never, never could have imagined. He positioned me with several audiences to teach on the topic of building upon our strengths and our spiritual gifts. He positioned me to coach people on retraining our brain to remain positive, using Philippians 4, 8 as a basis, which resulted in ministering to hundreds. He showed me that vulnerability is a strength, for God's strength is perfect in our weakness, our vulnerability. I found my identity in him. I, I'm on a path to influencing many through God's empowerment. I'm much more aware of God in my life every day and strive to let my light shine as bright as can be. I am much more aware of the messages he sends me through his word and through people he places in my life. Once I forgave everyone, including myself, surrendered everything to him and dealt with my own fears, I felt at peace, the peace of God that passes all understanding. The devil wants us to wallow in our self-pity, especially when we are in the wilderness. God wants us to praise him and revere him, always. The author, Richard Rohr, wrote in his final book, during his last days, we cannot attain the presence of God because we're already totally in the presence of God. What's absent is awareness. Are you aware of what God is doing for you today, this moment? I am, and I am eternally grateful that he delights in me enough to make me a strong woman of influence in his kingdom. Thank you.